my name is Janneke Borg Andersen, and today I'm going to present a paper published together with colleagues in Science of the Total Environment, where we argue that we should look at established principles in fisheries management in evaluating if and how cleanup technologies should be implemented to remove floating microplastics. The motivation behind the study is the numerous initiatives to develop and implement cleanup technologies to remove floating litter from oceans and rivers. We ask if it's efficient and if it's sustainable. We argue that the cost benefit ratio of cleanups can be evaluated using principles well known from fisheries management. These are catch per unit effort, where the density of litter is important, and impact on non target species, where the overlap between plastics and biota is key. We find that there are very few studies on floating microplastic densities. Only 19 published after 2015 in the oceans, and only six published after 2015 in rivers. We find that there are large variation in densities reported, and these are not evenly distributed. The litter is highly patchy. We don't know where and when the high densities exist, and what we do know is that there are very low densities in the open ocean. We can expect higher densities in coastal areas, in rainy season, in high population density areas, particularly in areas with poor waste management. In the Pacific gyre that is quite well studies, we've found that in high density areas, we can expect to find one item per 500 square meters. So in implementing cleanup technologies, we can expect low or no catches. There is little knowledge of overlap between floating plastics and life in the oceans and rivers. In many areas, we can expect a high overlap in time and space with organisms and floating habitat, such as the sargassum algamats that are regarded essential fish habitat and therefore protected. In the river studies that did report organic debris, this made up 10 to 90% of the total debris. Given the importance of organic matter in rivers and coastal habitats, upscaling of cleanup technologies will also have ecological impacts. In conclusion, we need more knowledge on the density and availability of litter in time and space in order to evaluate the catch efficiency of cleanup technologies. Also, negative environmental impacts of cleanup technologies must be evaluated. And technology development and implementation should minimize bycatch, habitat destruction, and impact on nutrient flows. Thank you.